Yeah, thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here and to present my project, uh, History in Digital Spaces and Historical Learning Inside the App into History, uh, which is also my PhD project. So I first uh, will explain the project and the concept of the application, and then I will show some of the study results, which are user types and types of historical narratives. Um, the project App into History is quite complex because several institutions has been involved uh, in Germany. So there's the, the Teacher Training Commission, Qualis NRW, the um, Bodelschwing Archive in Bethel Bielefeld, also in Germany, um, Paderborn University, and also different school classes and university students. Um, we also uh, had several phases, so we first produced a prototype of the application, then we tested and adapted it, and then we implemented it into the classroom. And I'm not only developed the application, but also conducted empirical studies about user behavior with university students and high school students. Um, to explain the concept, um, uh, I want to show how history textbooks in Germany are normally structured. So first, there's an introduction text about the historical topic. Then there are historical sources or documents and then there are tasks for the students. And you would think if you look at it, okay, the tasks are about historical thinking and about interpretation, interpretations of the historical sources, so like also a critical approach to them, but often it is not the case. So students um, don't have to use the historical source to um, answer the questions. They only have to read the text at the beginning because all the interpretation is already there there, and it's not about thinking by their own. And it's not only in one textbook, but you can see it in several other textbooks, and we have studies about these, um, that the main part of the tasks aim only at reproduction and reorganization, and tasks that require a reflexive approach to the acquired knowledge and methods, or tasks um, that ask learners to make independent interpretations and evaluations are strongly underrepresented. And okay, one thing is the history textbook, another thing is what happens in history classes at school, but also there you can see in, in empirical studies that in a lessons, learners usually work with historical sources for less than 10 minutes, and also the most elementary criteria of source criticism are often disregarded. And source selection is often streamlined and leads to one historical narrative oration pre-constructed by the teacher or by the history textbooks. And the result, we can also see in other studies, is a largely affirmative and positivistic approach to historical sources. And this is in whole contrast to what historical thinking is meant to be. And this you can define with the disciplinary matrix according to Jan Rusen. So historical thinking and also learning should start with um, questions in the present about the past and our interests and perspectives on this. And then students should also um, think about how can we answer these questions, what uh, materials do we need, for what sources, and then they should search for these materials and analyze them, and then to, they should um, narrate their own history, and this history can also be different from the history of the teachers or from the textbooks. And so this is the idea for the concept of the app into history to enable such a learning process, which is similar to historical research. So in the application, students can develop their own historical topic and questions. They can do their own research, analyze and interpret and contextualize the historical documents, and then write their own narrative. And in the, um, yeah, the main part of the application is the cooperation with institutions beyond the classroom, so museums and archives. And for my project, I cooperated with the Bethel Archive in Bielefeld, and um, the Bethel Foundation was founded in 1867, and it developed until now to one of Europe's largest Christian social healthcare um, entities, and it also existed during the Nazi time. 
Um, so there are different tools in the application. It is a modular educational platform and every group has its own room in the application. And in that room, um, students work together in small groups and they can use all the tools collaboratively. So first there's a research logbook where they can find the task and the newsfeed. Then there's the digital archive and where they can search for archival documents, they can select several pages out of this and transfer this to a timeline where they can um, analyze the sources and also um, put uh, like um, digital annotations on it. And then in the end, there's a journal where students can write their historical narration and also publish it like in their own digital space. Okay, so for the beta module, I also developed a research assignment. And this starts with a debate in the city council of Bielefeld. So two political parties um, discuss about a new street name in Bielefeld. And the Christian Democratic Union wants to name the street after Friedrich von Bodelschwing. He was the head of the Bodelschwing Foundation during the Nazi time. And the, um, the Greens, a more liberal party, are against this, and they want to name the st street after Elizabeth Philip. She was a victim of the Nazi regime. And um, this debate is uh, fictional, but behind there's an actual research debate, and it is about uh, euthanasia, eugenics, and forced sterilization in the Nazi time in Bielefeld. And also on the web, there are different narratives about this. So one narrative is that Friedrich von Bodelschwing was like a passive uh, resistance fighter against the Nazis and that he prevented euthanasia in Bethel. But there are also other narratives who say, um, no, he also supported um, the Nazis and there was euthanasia in Bethel and so there's also a lot of critique about Bethel. And um, in the application, like, the um, political parties can't find a solution, so they hire historians to do research about this and to write an expert report for the city council and to decide, should we name the street after Friedrich von Bodelschwing or Elisabeth Philipp, or do we need another person for this? And so the students in the application take the role of these historians and start their research. So here you can see the um, logbook with the different tasks and the digital archive. We have for the Betel module over 800 digitized um, archival documents inside. This is a timeline where you can also put like these colored boxes, um, the annotations, and you can also use texts for this. And there you can use the timeline for presentations and you can show your results and your interpretations and also the annotations on the sources. And here is the journal where you have different like text boxes and you can include also elements of the timeline in this. And then export this or also share it with your um, classmates. Um, so perhaps this concept is quite nice, but you could think, oh, perhaps it's too difficult for students because it's like a really, really like a historical research process. So I analyzed also how students use the app into history and how do they narrate history in the application. And the app is the learning material, but also my survey instrument. So I could collect log file data, which is quantitative data, and also all the learning products, so the narration students wrote in the application that are qualitative data. And I analyzed these data uh, via qualitative content analysis and log file analysis. So I used uh, Matomo and different Python programs and uh, k-means clustering. So I can't go into detail now, but just like very shortly, um, the quantitative data, there were several dimensions in it. You can imagine like every click is, is um, collected in the log files. So I analyzed like how much time students spend in the app, how often they visit it, and also how they use the different tools, like the logbook, the timeline, the archive, the journal. So these were in total 12 dimensions, and I had 49 groups of 168 users. And um, so I used the machine learning algorithm to like find structures in this data set, and um, here you can see one of the results. So I could identify different user types, and um, these are five different user types, like cluster um, 
0 to 4, and they differ all like how they used the application. So I could identify users who were very engaged, so used the uh, app very intensive in time, visit, and page views. These are like groups of cluster four. Then I had users who are still very engaged, but also I had users who are like used the app like in a more minimalistic way. I think that's also normal. But then I could also identify users who used more the logbook for at the beginning of their research and also users who used the journal and the timeline more. So I named these like the journalist. And this is important because here you can see that all tools were used in the application and also like they were used in an individual way. So the app can enable individualized learning processes. So now what's about the qualitative data? So what kind of narrations students wrote in the application? And I analyzed how students deal with other narratives on the web because if you see the Wikipedia page or the Beetle homepage, it is quite different and um, also controversy. I also analyzed how they deal with the historical sources and for example, if they um, uh, have also used like source critical reflections and also I analyzed the positions in the historical debate. Um, so I analyzed if there is a plurality. So also just <laughs> one insight, I, I want to show you one um, part of a narrative um, about historical source criticism and there are also different types of it. One type is about the source or the genre and um, one group wrote other families also received so-called comfort letters. Source 228 is a copy of a transcript of a letter to a man. The addressee and sender are not mentioned. However, the letter contains the same information as Elizabeth's family received. The transfer to, of the patient in the case of a mother constituted a wartime measure. The asylum would only serve as a transit facility for the sick who were to be transferred to another asylum nearby. And that is important. Now, the sentences of the two sources are almost identical. Only the person and the cause of death differ. So they could see that, okay, here we have a special kind of source, and because of this, it's a so-called comfort letter, and this is a proof that there was euthanasia in the case of Elizabeth Philip. Um, so I think that is very elaborated for high school students, and it's not normally seen in other empirical studies. Um, so I also then quantified the uh, results of the qualitative analysis and used a machine learning algorithm to identify different types of historical narratives. Also, I found these, <laughs> and just in short, um, I could identify that uh, students like differ in how they deal with historical sources. So I had like groups who on only, only used the sources to prove their statements, but also groups who used multi-perspective sources and also groups who um, critically reflected on those historical sources. I had also students, but less, <laughs> who used not only sources, but also historical narratives on the app. And I had groups who were the most, I would say, elaborated um, narratives, and because they had they had all of these um, reflections, and um, so I call them reflective all around us. So to sum up, um, like in the empirical study, I could show that such a concept which is, which is open is not too difficult for students, and that also because it's so open, it uh, allows them to take different learning paths and also to develop different narratives in the web. And these differences also enable important discussions in the classroom because then they can see, okay, there's not only one narrative possible, but it depends a lot on our perspectives, on our questions, and that history is all, always a construction of the present about the past. Um, I could not find a correlation between user types and types of historical narratives, but there are trends, but yeah, that is also logical. But more important is that there is a uh, really strong heterogeneity within learning groups and also within different ages. And this is also like, I think very normal, but it's important when we design learning processes also in the web. And like, um, I think what is very important is that this concept um, enables um, multi-perspective uh, storytellers, and this is very important for our plural democracy 
democracies because we need this plural storytellers also in our present. Thank you very much. <clears throat>